Hello everyone, Christmas is over and I hope you had some great holidays with your family and with your friends. And 2019 is almost over and there were a lot of cool videos, a couple of new subscribers and on Instagram and here on YouTube I ask you to send me over a couple of questions so we can do a quick Q&A. Except videography, do you like or enjoy taking photos? Yes, I do like taking still pictures and shoot with a camera. As a matter of fact, before I made my YouTube channel, I used to shoot lifestyle, people and fashion photography. And I got myself a DSLR camera back then. It was a Nikon a D70 and then I had a Fuji S5 Pro. And that was right before the time um, stills cameras or DSLR cameras were able to shoot video. Once the cameras were able to shoot video, eventually I transitioned into videography as well, which then started basically the YouTube channel. Nowadays, I still like to take uh, still photos, but I usually only use my phone for Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I also use my camera, which right now shoots this video. So I really enjoy taking still pictures, um, but I don't do it as much as I used to. So the next question is, how about a video for motorcycle bags slash luggage? So as you can see, I'm currently in the car. It is December and the temperature is about two degrees Celsius, which is obviously pretty cold. That is why I'm not on the motorcycle right now. Not because it is cold, because I just got myself a heated jacket with a battery. So riding in the cold is not a problem actually, but rather the streets being very slippery. Yesterday it rained and with temperatures close to zero degrees Celsius, chances are pretty high that it is slippery on the streets. Therefore, I won't be able to ride my motorcycle and review motorcycle related luggage. However, if you check out my channel, you can find a couple of motorcycle related backpack videos on my channel. One of them being the Velomatch Rolltop, but also the Krieger R21 or something, or 25, but also the SW Motec tank, how you call it, tank bag. And yeah, but as soon as the weather is going to be a little bit warmer, I will definitely review a couple of more motorcycle related uh, luggage options, be it backpacks or luggage that you can attach to the motorcycle. Most important MT-07 mods that you would recommend? I think the most important mod on a motorcycle or on any item for that matter is to modify it to your height, your body and your needs. So the first thing that I would recommend to change are the levers. I have fairly small hands and the stock levers are just way too big and make it a little bit uncomfortable to handle or to use. They're not impossible to use but it's way more comfortable and useful to change the levers to your size and to your needs. It's the same with the backpack. You change the strap length and look for a backpack that fits your build or your body. And the same goes with something on your motorcycle or on your bicycle or on your car where you change the seat height and stuff like that. So I would recommend if you get a motorcycle, the first thing to change or to mod is the levers to fit your hands and your needs. Even if you have bigger hands, smaller or proper levers, uh, custom levers, will make braking and using the clutch way more easier. What was the best part of visiting the backpack factories? The best thing about the factory tour in Indonesia probably was uh, visiting my dad. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, my parents are both from Indonesia, but I was born and raised in Germany and my dad does live in Indonesia. I only see my dad once a year and having an extra opportuni opportunity to see my dad is always great. As a matter of fact, the second factory in Semarang is actually rather close to where my dad is living. So that was actually a lucky accident, uh, so to say, that my dad was right around the corner. And that was probably one of the coolest things about the whole trip to Indonesia to visit that bag factory. Furthermore, I think in terms of what was the most interesting in that factory was the realization about how intricate and how much work there is to make a backpack. I always knew that making a bag is difficult but I never expected it to be that difficult and that there are so many people involved and yeah the realization that a bag is more intricate, difficult to make than, let's say, a t-shirt, shoes, sneakers, or other types of garments. That was really impressive to see and made me even more appreciative about this love that we have um, for bags. I really like reviewing bags because they are so detailed and there's so much work going into them and always visiting the country where my parents come from, where my roots are from. That's always great. I really love Indonesia. What is your favorite thing about making bag reviews? I think my most favorite part about bags and reviewing bags is that bags are so detailed and intricate because Although they are probably the most important thing about your wardrobe or your day-to-day -day life because they carry all of your essential items for work, for traveling and stuff like that, bags usually are a little bit overseen. They are kind of like the underdog. They always help you with all the stuff that you need. They carry everything, they protect everything, but we always overlook them in a way. And with that in mind, there are so many small details and features and things that you can find in a bag. What they are made of, all the small little pockets, the details about the stitching and stuff like that that make bags so interesting and so cool to like actually. And all the enthusiasm that goes into liking bags, using bags, is reflected by all of the details that goes into making a bag. And that's what's really interesting about reviewing and also using bags. You can make them your own by packing differently, by maybe modifying them. And each bag is different for each person because each person carries different items and that's what makes backpacks or bags very interesting to me. A tough question, how about a quick guide to which backpack is most suitable for certain jobs or situations, e.g. EDC, travel, work, camping or shopping? Yeah, as you mentioned, it is a tough question because also as I answered in the question before, the cool thing about bags or using bags in general is that we all have different packing styles, needs, maybe live in different climates or areas. So it is really hard to make an actual proper guide about which bag is most suitable for which situation. Because if you have to walk a lot then potentially a hiking backpack is better if you work in an office where a suit is important, then the backpack or the bag has to reflect that style. So it is really difficult to actually make a proper guide about which bag is most suitable for which uh, situation. So for me personally, if someone asks me, hey, which bag should I get? I always ask, okay, how big is it supposed to be? 
roughly, what do you want to carry? Do you want to carry books? Do you only want to uh, carry clothing? If it's a travel bag, what kind of travel style do you prefer? Do you carry lots of clothing or do you have only like merino wool stuff so you don't have to carry that much or you only wear black so it's uh, easier to pack and stuff like that. With all of that information, for me personally, it's easier to recommend the bag. So just making a guide about which bag is most suitable for that situation is very difficult and probably not really applicable to every person. But that's the beauty about bags. You can actually make any bag your own or adapt to a packing style or a bag and make that bag work for your situation. It's not like, like a pair of shoe or uh, a pair of pants or any other type of clothing that's very specific potentially, like a suit is only for the office or for a nice date or a dinner or something. While almost any bag can be used for almost anything or you can make it work for almost anything um, so you can't go like hiking with a suit but you probably could go hiking with um, a Bellroy backpack that is more has more the look of an office bag or you could take a hiking bag to the office if the office is really casual. So that's why I probably wouldn't do a proper guide to which bag is suitable for which situation. Five pieces of kit you cannot travel without. First of all would be my phone, definitely, because it's a piece of entertainment, it's, it's a map, it's a translator and yeah, a form of communication, obviously. So that has always to be in my pockets when I'm traveling. The next thing that's always with me when I'm traveling would be some form of multi-tool. Either it is the Swiss Army knife, super tinker with a screwdriver and a knife and some scissors and also some tweezers or uh, something like uh, a Leatherman, for instance. And because there are sometimes instances where you have to screw down something be it on your luggage, on your rolling uh, case, or you have to cut something, or you have a splinter in your fingers, something like that. So I would always recommend to have at least a small type of multi-tool with you in your pockets or in your luggage. The next thing would be multiple means of payment. So an ATM card, a credit card, and some cash, and separate that on your body, on your luggage. So if one of your cards gets lost or stolen, you still have another card. Same goes with identification. In Germany, you have a passport and an ID card. And I always travel with both. So if one gets lost, I still can identify myself if I have to go to the police or something. But also I have a copy and print it, but also as a PDF on um, a drive, like a flash drive or something like that. Just in case if you get robbed or your luggage gets um, lost or something like that. It always helps to have multiple means of that specific item. The next item when I'm traveling is, you obviously have all your chargers with you for your phone, your computer and your camera. But usually in a hotel room you don't have lots of um, power outlets. So I have like this small power strip um, extension cord something with at least three power outlets. I connect that to an international adapter and that I will put into a power outlet in the hotel room and then I only need one adapter but still have three outlets for all of my chargers or other items that need power. And the last item that I always have with me when I'm traveling is a little bit of gaffer's tape. You can check out my videos Traveling with Bo where I have some security tips or the tips of stuff that I always travel with. And one of the items is always gaffer's tape. On one hand, you can use it to hide your passport or money in the hotel room uh, 
put all that stuff, important stuff, in a Ziploc bag and then you can tape that Ziploc bag underneath a drawer or somewhere else where it's hidden. Or if you need to fix a hole in your bag, then gaffer's tape is awesome. Opposed to duct tape, gaffer's tape doesn't leave any residues. So I would always opt for the a little bit more expensive gaffer's tape than the duct tape. Although duct tape is pretty heavy duty, it will leave some residues on the items where you stick it onto. What is one piece of gear you wished existed? Wild but feasible? That's a good question to be quite honest. I thought about it quite a lot and I haven't come to a proper conclusion yet. However, considering that I'm one of the people that is always on his phone and uses it quite a lot of time and I always see how much weight my MacBook Pro, how heavy it is in my backpack. I think I would love to have some form of adapter that makes my phone into a laptop. So I have like a laptop, um, like a screen and a keyboard on it and it only weighs like 500 grams or something and then I can attach my phone into it and it makes it a proper laptop. Not a laptop that can like edit but where I can like do mail stuff, web browsing and stuff like that. I know that a phone like that exists. I think it's from Razer and they have this laptop thing where you can put your phone into it and that's definitely something I would like to check out in the future. But it is first generation and as far as I can see from the reviews, it's not working that properly yet. I believe that along the lines, the next few years, there will be something that our phones are that powerful that we could use them as computers or as a workhorse. I mean, I can already do a lot of stuff on my phone, answer emails and web browsing but the ergonomics aren't that great yet. I know that from a technical standpoint, this is all possible, but I haven't found a good solution yet. And yeah, maybe sometime in the future, there will be something that can connect to my phone and make it a computer. That would be awesome. That would make traveling much more easier because most of the time when you're on the road, you only need to answer emails, um, write Word documents or stuff like that, or browse the web but you don't need like a proper workhorse machine. So that would be awesome. Obviously you have a lot of backpacks and slings. My question is how many and what bags do you keep in rotation? I only have three slings now and even then I have trouble switching back and forth between them. Obviously I have a lot of backpacks and because I want to review and film a video every week or at least every second week, I have to switch between bags quite often um, just to review them of course. So I don't really go back to specific bags that often. However, for motorcycle riding and like going to the gym or to the dojo, I have a specific um, set of bags that I always come back to for those special needs. For instance, when going to dojo, I have boxing gloves, my gi and stuff like that. That's very spacious. And for that, I use the Velomachi duffel bag. Before I moved, I always went there with my bicycle and that bag is pretty good on the bicycle, but also on the motorcycle. On the motorcycle, I also like to use the Velomachi roll top bag because that's a specific bag that is very well or very usable on the motorcycle due to the harness system. For EDC bags, I usually switch to the bag that I'm reviewing. Sometimes I go back to some of my favorites like the Attitude Supply ATD1 was one of my favorites that I always kind of went back to or the Evergoods uh, CPL24 or the Alchemy Equipment Carryology Collaboration Backpack. That was also a great bag that I like to go back to. But usually I switch to new bags um, because I want to test them. When switching bags that often, um, I found for me personally having 
compartments or pouches that I can just take out and put in a different bag. That helps me quite a lot. You can see it, uh, for instance, in my extended EDC, which that video I will link in the info tab above. In that pouch, I have all the essentials like charger cables, adapters and stuff like that. Because they are so small, it's easier to have them in one pouch and then just take the pouch and put that in a different bag. But also with other items, I like to put everything in cubes and um, compartments so it's easier to switch between bags. Obviously, that also means that Sometimes I don't use all the little compartments and slots inside the bag, but for me it's just easier that way to go from different bags and different packing scenarios. Okay, this was the very quick Q&A and sorry that I wasn't able to answer all of the questions, but I hope you still like this video and if you have any more questions, feel free to comment below and I will try to answer all of the questions in the comment section. And yeah, thank you so much for all of your support in 2019. I hope you liked all of the videos and next year we will have a bunch of new videos. Also in February, there will be a small little Karyology meetup at the Heimplanet office which will be held on the 28th or the 29th of February, potentially on both days, depending on how many people are coming to Hamburg for that. I will post some information on Facebook, on Instagram, but I will also do a video about that. So you will be in the loop what's going to happen on that meetup. So last but not least, I hope you will have a great New Year's Eve. And yeah, like always, if you have any more questions, comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss the next videos. Thank you very much and I see you in 2020.